Ina Samaki Mombasa ndo wafifu. Lakini samaki kama hawa mbao tumewashika na kulengana na shulizi na, na chumbo hiki na vokenya kazi hii hawalipi. Sasa basi mbono unaifanya biashara ikuwa hauna, hau, hakuna faida yotu unapata? Kulengana na maisha alivo, uweza tuweze. Tumeamua umuagegea shoni kidogo, upate na nikikubwa pia utapata hivu hivu tutashukuru kwa mwezi mungu wali okupa yo riziki. Nikipata about kama 20 kilos na kuendelea hapo kidogo na ni kaidisha. Lakini kiwa nikipata kidogo na kuwa senti naenda kwa fuel, naenda kwa bitings of ya hiyo chambo, ya samaki, na kuwa ni lo, loss. Sendi peki yangu, tuko about 3, 4, 4 people, 5 people. Tunashia paka 200 shillings, tunashia paka 50 shillings, sengi tunakuwa nothing, hakuna kitu. Tumezaliwa wengi. Na kila moja nataka kupata. Sasa ndo nakuwa maisha nao pia wengine wanaingilia hapo hapo. Oshona. Sasa lazima tokolo uchumi na kwa nini? Ni kidogo. Ni everyday samaki anashikwa. Na everyday samaki analiwa. Sasa ndo revo lazima kidogo na kwa ni chini. Nje, semu za uzunguni ya wapi, wambewa mvumbi ni tajiri. Huku cost, wambewa mvumbi ni maskini. Kwa sababu, pengine hakusoma, au pengine sababu, Akisha retire kazi zake za juu, anaingilia hapo. Nenono kanua sisi ndio pua. Oshona, halafu sasa kisitoshe. Hakuna msaada aina yoyote. The fishing industry is the smallest arm of Kenya's agricultural sector, contributing only 0.8% of the agricultural GDP. And while globally, marine fisheries is estimated to be worth at least $200 billion annually, producing 67 million tons of fish, the value of Kenya's marine waters has not been computed. Estimates indicate that the potential for our marine fisheries is the range of 150,000 metric tons to 300,000 metric tons. But if you look at the statistic that we have currently, it's less than 9,000 9, metric tons that's being caught from, 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 from the sea. We are getting more and more fishermen coming to our waters, and there has been a sense of possibility of high overfishing happening. Because you look at the sizes of fish being caught, they are getting smaller by the day. It's a, an, um, it's a clear indication that there is overfishing happening. But for the outside waters, like, Mostly what we have is the tunas, and tunas are highly migratory. It's more of a regional based. Yeah. But of late, there has been concern of some species like the yellowfin tuna. It looks like it's been overexploited. In Africa, coastal waters only produce 4.6 million tons of fish annually, valued at $4.9 billion. But the problem is 52% of these fish stocks are already fully exploited, 8% is fully depleted, and 19% overexploited. In fact, only 20% of the fish stocks are believed to be underexploited, 
while 1% is recovering from depletion. Na baina ya papa ambao wana, inasemekana wamepungua watakani washikwe. Lakini sisi wavuvi hatujatolewa taarifa ya kuwa papa usimshike au mshikeni hatujatolewa taarifa. The exploitation and depletion of fish stocks is largely blamed on illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing activities which cost the global economy an estimated $23 billion annually. Kenya's coast has become quite vulnerable in recent years because it lacks the capacity to patrol its territorial waters. According to the figures we have seen, the impact on the economy of Kenya is around $10 billion. Um, shillings per year. That's one. Two uh, is um, uh, the impact on the marine environment. When somebody is stealing, sort of, doesn't really care what they take out and wh what remains. They just uh, uh, take the fish and go away. Illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing oftentimes involve Chinese and European Union vessels. But Chinese vessels are the most notorious when it comes to African waters, thriving on Africa's inability to patrol and secure its waters. This is according to a report published in May last year by Greenpeace Africa, which reported that at least 74 vessels owned by Chinese distant water fishing companies were illegally fishing in prohibited areas in West African waters. These vessels were accused of falsifying their gross tonnage of fish catches in order to cut down on operating costs by avoiding license fees. The vessels were caught in the waters off Senegal, Ghana, Guinea and Guinea-Bissau with China's largest distant water fishing company, the China National Fisheries Corporation, implicated. These illegal fishing activities were reported to have taken place between the years 2000 and 2014, with some cases going as far back as 1988. We have had cases also in Tanzania uh, where some fish, uh, some vessel was caught in, in, in the deep sea, illegally fishing. And uh, that case went for quite some time, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the government lost on that. The vessel that was caught off Tanzania, if it was caught in Kenyan waters, it would have been a grace for them because they would have paid very little money. That's just saying we need to be punitive. It should be equivalent to the worth of that vessel. Like in Indonesia, what they are doing currently is blasting those vessels. Tonnage fraud is also one thing that the Greenpeace Africa report accuses China of. In 2014, for instance, the China National Fisheries Corporation underdeclared gross tonnage for 44 of the 59 vessels that it operates in Africa, which not only evades licensing fees, but also illegally gives these higher volume vessels access to prohibited areas. Kenya knows that there is illegal fishing activity in its water, but it is yet to make any arrests. The problem is most of these vessels are actually fishing between Kenyan waters and other international waters. Tuna is one of the most illegally caught fish in the world, with an estimated 7 million tons caught globally, valued at $10 billion. Most of it comes from the Indian Ocean, which produces 24% of the total catches. Kenya's territorial waters lie within the southwest Indian Ocean, the richest tuna belt, with the fishing season running from May to July. The fish gets its value from the demand, first from the customers and the people who buy fish. But mostly, most important, the, uh, the fish gets its value from the content of its meat. So now, let's say like tuna. Tuna is highly recommended all over the world because of the redness of its meat and how healthy it is. Now this one, this is the mama tuna that I told you about. Yes. This, so, so this, is this is in season now. This is yellow fin, mm -hmm. as you can tell. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are the ones which boost the market. Okay. Yeah. Because the fat content in this uh, fish is high and healthy, healthy fat. Mm -hmm. So this fish is in demand. What is the weight of this fish? This fish is uh, 83 kilos. 83? Yeah, 83 oh, wow. kilos. Can how many people? This can feed roughly about 20 families. 20 families? Yes. Wow. 
very easily. So, and so now that it's 83 kilos, what is the value of that fish? 83 kilos, this will come roughly like 30 to 40,000. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Have you ever sold a fish like that? Yes. To one person? To one person, yeah. There's pe people, specific customers, who they come for this fish. Mm. So when you see it's here, it's stored for him. What kind of people are those? Uh, these hotels. are hotels uh, and uh, sushi, sushi restaurants mm. and big hotels. International law requires fishing vessels to call at the nearest port and Kenya puts reporting as a condition of a license for foreign vessels operating in its territorial waters. This involves specifying the cargo on board. In addition, Kenya requires weekly catch data reports to be submitted, but there are concerns that the reporting is not done accurately, purposefully concealing any illegal activities in the Kenyan waters. So if I, as a supplier, yes. bring you fish, yes. how do you determine where I got that fish? The fishermen we have, they have, they are registered. Mm. Yeah. So they have a document to produce, to produce that, to show that they are, they are already under, they are registered, they are registered, that is. You don't pick any fishermen on the way. Kenya has licensed between 34 and 40 past sailors in the last four years to fish in its waters. Past sailors drag massive nets, sometimes two kilometers long, behind them. These walls of nets capture most of the fish in an area within them. The licenses cost between thirty and fifty thousand dollars annually. Other countries, on the other hand, charge as high as nine thousand dollars per day. The reason we do licensing other vessels because if you are not actually able to utilize that water, according to the international regulations, if you are not able to exploit uh, your water, you should let those people who are capable of doing that exploit on your business. But ideally, it would be good for us if the Kenyans themselves would be the ones exploiting the waters. We only have one Kenyan uh, longliner because we really don't have our own fleet. Even though Kenya lacks the capacity to fully exploit its territorial waters, a recent study conducted by WWF indicates that fish populations have declined by 49% between the year 1970 and 2012. The analysis tracked 5,829 populations of 1,234 fish species. Kwa huyu papa nae, wanatamani, tamani yake huyu, tamani yake ni haya na maini yake. Tamani ya papa ni fin na maini. Yeah. <laughs> The report also shows a steep decline in coral reefs, mangroves, and seagrasses that support fish species. More than one third of the fish tracked in the study rely on coral reefs, and following the decline of the reef, the fish numbers also declined by 34 percent between 1979 and 2010. <laughs> The challenges beneath the water have in turn strained fish processors, leaving them with plenty of idle capacity and putting hundreds of jobs at risk. A tuna processing factory in Mombasa is no longer in operation, leaving 600 people unemployed. Actually, this is the only Kenyan tuna farm uh, factory and also in the region neither Tanzania or uh, Mozambique they don't have the only other place you have a canning factory is in uh, Seychelles and Mauritius okay so you said your processing period is between November and, and April, April yeah the following year depending oh, definitely. on the Exactly. The so exactly. that's only once a year once that's a, a year months per year yeah so the rest of the year what happens to the what just maintaining the premise you're just maintaining it yeah maintaining it
do you during the time you're processing then are you making enough money to ensure that the times you're Actually, not that's the, the challenge that's the challenge because you have to pay for the word for the power that's the challenge you are getting my dear please mm. yeah yeah that's the challenge you are getting but we are trying mm. to sort of the problem but we are unable so Which fish do you like? What is the purpose that you are calling to for? Crew change on this charge. Only crew change on this charge and then you are making a refueling and... Uh, yeah. Now your fishing trip has been more to Comorian water and uh, special waters? We have been in Comorian water, Tanzania, Mozambique uh, and Madagascar. Okay, they are allowed to fish in Kenya in water. Kenya waters. Yeah, but if this license is not valid for this year, they go fish in the Kenya water and when they come here, we find in the logbook that they fish in Kenya water, now we take the action. The Galana Tres is a Spanish passena. Every time she's out on the waters, she's hunting for tuna and tuna-like species. Her capacity is more than 28,000 metric tons and it takes 28 days to fill her up. Uh, this is, this is the, 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 sonar, the, the sonar. The captain barely speaks English, but he tells me that even though he has a license to fish in Kenya, he prefers not to because the Mombasa port is not fish friendly. This is the fish, and we are, we are around the, the fish uh, dropping the, the net. For him, Port Victoria in Seychelles is a much better choice because it has an exclusive fish port. What made you go into fishing? Why are you a fisherman? I, I chose to be a fisherman a long time ago, simply because I, I grew up by the ocean. I went to the Seychelles Maritime Academy, it is now. Well, you have to study to be a fisherman. Um, uh, many people... Uh, that's the requirement here? Not well, uh, not necessarily, but I, I, I wanted to be a professional fisherman. Is the fisherman here a poor man? I mean, it all depends on the definition of poor. I mean, uh, poor can mean different things to different people, right? Um, I wouldn't say I'm poor, but I'm not a rich man. It all depends on, on performance. When they've had a good performance, a good fishing season, the fisherman is, is, is set to come out with a very good salary, which sometimes could be even higher than uh, what people get as the minimum salary. Government has put in place some subsidies that actually um, uh, allows them to make a profit and also encourages people to go fishing. So they get uh, fuel at a tax-free rate as a reduction and all fishing materials that they import, they also, also receive tax reduction on this. Seychelles is a small island nation made up of 115 islands. The landmass is only 440 square kilometers, more than 1,000 times smaller than Kenya. As small as it is, its waters are a favorite fishing ground, spanning 1.3 million square kilometers. This is currently our EZ, and the, the software sh shows That's us as well. Line. Yeah, the red line shows us the, the our EZ boundary, and in the red, uh, red uh, dotted. Uh, not circle but squares, it's our restricted zone. We have a nine to eight restricted zone for fishing activity. Um, but zones. Yeah, restricted zone. But uh, the restricted zones are limited for are limited for industrial vessels and only our artisan vessels are allowed to fish in there. But just like every other coastal nation, Seychelles has suffered the impact of illegal fishing. When you see that vessel has crossed into an area where it shouldn't be, mm -hmm. what is what what are the steps you take? And if maybe it has broken the law, how do you go about prosecuting it? Yes, if the vessels have broken the law, usually we call them to port. Actually, we call them to port for investigate if they have any catch on board of species they are not supposed to fish. 
And uh, like if the person have a license to fish for tuna species only, and they come back with uh, the most species, we find them under, under the Fisheries Act. Already, it has two fish species that it considers threatened, but it has a five-year plan in place to replenish the stocks. Part of that plan includes convincing the people to eat other types of fish. Also, every fisherman has been recruited into the war on illegal fishing. Ninety-nine percent of uh, illegal activities happening at sea have been reported by fishermen, by our, our fishermen, because it's important to note that all our fishermen are licensed. But hope is not lost. Earlier this year, a United Nations Port State Measures Agreement entered into force intended to end illegal fishing. Uh, the Port State Measures allows them and facilitates the exchange of um, information, um, timely information. The measures were drafted in 2009 as an addition to the law of the sea. The treaty requires that every fishing vessel lands its catch at the nearest port and then declare everything on board. This is a good thing, especially for bycatch, which is when the fishermen's net catch fish that they did not intend to catch. The bycatch is oftentimes discarded at sea. In fact, researchers say that the amount of fish that is discarded could be double what is declared. Most illegal fishermen do not go to any port, and what they do instead is to transfer the fish to another vessel in the high seas. The treaty increases inspection in ports, and the possible refusal of port entry or access to port services including landing, transshipment, processing and packaging of seafood for stolen fish. Kenya and Seychelles are among the countries that have ratified the agreement. Tuna is a pelagic species, as I say. It, it migrates. Kenyan waters, Seychelles waters, uh, Somali waters, it migrates. So if the, if the destruction is being done by one country, by, uh, by in, in one water, in one EZ, the effect will carry through in the rest of the, uh, the regional. It's, really, it's a regional thing, so we have to, do, to take action against this. Kenya also plans to build a fish port in Lamu under the Lapset project, which will open up marine business. With only one port, it becomes difficult to handle fishing business because the port of Mombasa charges uniform fees for all vessels, regardless of what they are flowing to get fresh supplies. For this reason, many fishermen prefer to avoid the Kenyan port altogether and instead land in Seychelles, where it is nearly four times cheaper. Basically, the way we have a competition with people like Seychelles and Mauritius is that they give a, get a concession when you bring your fish somewhere. And they look at it like a business. For example, you bring the fish here, you have to load that fish with uh, the vessel with fresh waters, fresh food supplies, and a lot of other things. At the moment, Kenya earns just 3 billion shillings annually from its ocean. But once the Lamu port is completed, this figure is projected to jump to hundreds of billions of shillings per year. The goal here is that by the year 2030, Kenya will have at least 25 fishing vessels so that more Kenyans benefit from the ocean. A fisheries control and monitoring surveillance center is currently under construction in Mombasa that will enable Kenya to track the vessels in its waters. We are in the process of now um, purchasing a vessel for our patrol that should be coming we next year. Not yet. That vessel is under construction in Asia at a cost of 3 billion shillings. Its size is roughly the length of a football field. Even smaller vessels are remarkably expensive. A good fishing vessel, for instance, which is able to fish in deep waters offshore, can cost in excess of 40 million shillings and millions more to run. These vessels not only have the right equipment to find the right fish, such as sonar, radar, and the right kind of net, but also have freezing compartments on board, meaning that they can go out on expeditions that are many weeks long. Kenya's territorial waters cover 143,000 square kilometers with a 650 kilometer coastline. One patrol boat is not enough. You know those um, guys who are doing um, illegal and regulated and unreported fishing, there are also people who are, might be armed sometimes. We filmed this in June this year, when the sea was rough and therefore not a good time to be out in the waters, especially for small vessels. The fishermen know this, but that never stops them from going out there. 
and with boats this small, they can only go as far as 12 nautical miles offshore, which is roughly 21 kilometers. How is it? Wanakwenda passing time. Tu si ati ni wavu video sema taka kuvua kama vile rostio. Washavua kitambo nzi hizo. Nzi hizo samaki ilikuwa raisi sana. Wacha sasa samaki kuna mnunua kama dhahabu. Sababu samaki ni wachache lafu na ni bei kuju. Sans mai, sans mai kanti te. Lontan ti plein poa song pa tu lem la dio sen tan pa tu obo obo kome la lontan wali. Some fish importing countries such as the European Union have put in place legislations that blacklist countries that fail to take action on illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing. The EU is among the world's biggest importers of fish and also among the biggest owners of distant water fishing vessels, with at least 15,000 vessels registered to fish in distant waters. It uses a card system, yellow and green, to decide whether a country should be blacklisted or not. Ghana, for instance, exports 128 million euros worth of fish to the EU every year, but in November 2013, it got yellow carded for failing to take sufficient action against IUU. This means that Ghana could no longer export fish to the EU. But within two years, Ghana had strengthened its legal framework and set punitive measures for IUU. And then in October last year, it received a green card and it is now exporting to the EU again. Kenya is still a long way from exporting marine products. But it hopes that by 2030, it will have built a name for itself in the fishing business and cut down on the number of foreign vessels fishing in its waters. Would you want your children to be fishermen? I have a son, yes. I have a son now. I'm, uh, he will finish his uh, O-levels and after A-levels. And I'm pushing him to go through the Maritime Training Academy. I have a son, yes. I have a son now. I'm pushing him to go through the Maritime Training Academy. I have a son, yes. I have a son now. I'm pushing him to go through the Maritime Training Academy. It's too hard. It's too hard. Ngumu. Zainab Wandati NTV for the Blue Economy.